This is Dr. Jay Smith back again, and I'm back with uh, our good friends, Mel from Sneakers Corner, and also Murad from the Middle East. Uh, Murad will be sitting in to listen to us, and we'll chime in every once in a while. But Mel, I've asked him to come on board because of something that happened in a previous broadcast with Robert Spencer. For those of you who remember, uh, I was a little shocked to hear Robert Spencer say that there is no evidence at all for any of the first rightly guided caliphs, that would be Abu Bakr, uh, Umar, Uthman, and Ali. This is known as the Rashidun period, the golden period of Islam. And of course, that shocked me. And I, couldn't, I said, are you sure that there's no reference? Because if you don't have reference for these four caliphs, uh, then you can pretty well dismiss anything prior to Mu'awiyah as being historical from the Islamic traditions. Remember the Islamic traditions that we're always confronting over here back in the 9th and 10th century, we're always trying to find what's happening in the 7th century. Mel is a uh, becoming a specialist in this area along with Murad. Uh, Murad will not show his face because he has for security reasons. But Mel has made a, uh, has certainly during this lockdown period, has made an enormous number of uh, videos on the research that he and Murad are doing on the historicity of Islam in the seventh century. So Mel, God bless you. Thanks for coming on board. What I want to ask you is, can you prove to me or can you support what Robert Spencer was saying? Or is there something else uh, that you would pull away from what he's saying, but you have to prove today concerning these four rightly guided caliphs? Yeah, so my position isn't quite as absolute as Robert Spencer's. I would argue that there weren't four first caliphs. I would argue that Muawai was really the first caliph. Um, the historicity of the, the first four that are mentioned as, as caliphs is doubtful. Um, there's an awful lot of uh, chronological problems with it. Uh, there's definite proof that at least one of the caliphs, or supposed caliphs, actually was never a caliph and that died much uh, earlier than the Islamic tradition um, would, would uh, say. So there's massive problems with it. And, and because these four are so important to the Islamic tradition, they are you know, the four foundation stones on which so much rests. Because they are so um, unreliable as historic figures, it, it really leads us to question much more of the tradition than, than has been up to this date. Okay, let's me see you make your point. Uh, do you have a PowerPoint that you can share with us? I do, yeah. So let's do that now. So while he's bringing up the PowerPoint, it's obvious that we, that, that the Islamic traditions are very clear that uh, after Muhammad came Abu Bakr. Uh, Muhammad died in 632. The traditions are very clear that Abu Bakr takes over from 632 to 634. So let's see what you have to say, Mel. Convince me, and if you convince me, I'm sure you're going to convince many of those who are watching. Who were these first caliphs? Did they exist? Are they different than, or if they did exist, are they different than what the Islamic traditions have to say about them? Yeah, um, so this is a, an early image of the, the first caliphs. And uh, as I've often heard um, someone say, um, always suspect someone with a monobra, but it's only a minor little detail there. Um, we're going to start with a question, actually, before we go into the, the first caliphs. I, I'd like our audience to guess who am I, and I'm going to give some clues. My mother's name is Amina. One of my wives is called Zainab. Who do you think at this stage I might be talking about? Well, I, you want me to answer, for instance, everybody yeah. quiet at this point. This is obviously... Yeah. Muhammad from the traditions. The traditional Muhammad, his mother was Amina. His father had already died when he was born. She died soon after. She had to be given, he had to be given over to Abu, Abu Talib to yeah. be taken care of. Zainab would be his first wife and only wife as long as she, she lived. Yeah. Be Muhammad. Um, and you'd actually feel even now that you're even more confirmed because I also have another wife called Aisha. Okay. okay. But actually, if we look at... Consummated when she was nine. Yeah. 
But actually, if you look at the historical um, record, I'm actually referring to Caliph Marwan, the father of Abdul al-Malik. Hold, hold, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. He, he, <laughs> he was uh, ruling from, sorry, from 683 to 685. Muhammad died in 632. You're talking about 50 years later. Absolutely. So the, the historical record tells us that Marwan did have a mother called Amina, did have a wife called Zainab, and Aisha was another wife. He also had other wives. But it's the chances of all three details occurring for two different people is probably one in billions. It's maybe you could, you could maybe argue, okay, it's possible he might have had a mother called Amina and maybe one of his wives was the same as Muhammad. But to have all three details is, is um, astronomical odds. Now, what I'm, why I'm pointing this out, even though I'm focusing on the caliphs, is here we see some evidence that Muhammad's historicity is being, or his biography, I should say, is being created. And, you know, Abdul Malik, as we know, is a key figure in, the, in terms of the formation of Islam. So it's interesting that some of the details about Muhammad seems to be a reconstruction based on Abdul Malik's father. So I'm just saying that as a little... So Mel, what you're saying is, if we assume, it depends on what presuppositional, uh, presuppositional base you start from. If you start with the presupposition that the traditions are correct and that Amina is the mother of Muhammad, Zaymin would be the wife along with Aisha, then you would understand those three names. If you start from the position that we do, that these are all in doubt because they're written so late, but they need to, they need to be referring to someone. So when you start and you need to create a history for this man, Muhammad, now that you made him a prophet by the 8th century, he is now a prophet by then. According to Robert Spencer, he says that this is 730, that the first time that he could find Muhammad as a prophet. Um, you are saying probably that, you, and you would probably make a different date. We've got, but odd, you would say that these earliest references, uh, certainly in the Quran, are not Muhammad. We saw that from earlier. Am I correct, Murad, that you say that on that? Yes, exactly. The Quran doesn't reference the Arabian prophets. It's just a reference to Jesus Christ. Okay. But once, when would you, Murad, when would you say Muhammad then became a prophet? What date would you put that at? Um... I think in the 690s, maybe, but so I'm not 100% sure. Okay, so you would put it during the time of Abdul Malik, because he was ruling from 685 to 705. Mel, when would you say that Muhammad was finally uh, anointed, given that anointing as prophet? Yeah, I would say that it was the 690s. Very few people would have heard of him as Muhammad um, in, in earlier years. Um, in a future video on my channel, actually this Friday, uh, June the, anyone remember the date? June 5th? It'll be June, I'm actually, June the 5th, yeah. I'm actually going to be presenting who I think the real person behind Muhammad name. So if anyone wants to tune in to that. But um, That's Sneakers Corner for any of you who are interested. Sneakers Corner, June the 5th. We're going to find out finally who this Muhammad is. Now, if so that's the case. The reason, go yeah, ahead. So, so what I'm going to say essentially is people wouldn't have known this guy as Muhammad. He had a different name. And that's why when Abdul Malik introduces him to the world as Muhammad, this would be pretty much new to most people. And by this stage, time would have passed so much. Well, I think it would be 60 years or so, 70 years after the time of the historical person. Um, it was plenty long enough for people just to accept that this was the actual name for him. Okay. So... Coming back to our slide, if this is the case, once you've chosen as a prophet, late 7th century, early 8th century, you've got to have a history. In order to create the history for him, in order to give him a family, you start taking that which you already know. And so in this case, Amina, Zainab, Aisha would be people that are already within the family. Why don't you just use those names is what you're saying. Absolutely. Okay. So you're, you're, you're using um, you made figures, essentially. So if we... Look at the, the term caliph. Um, so there is no rock inscription that ever uses caliph or khalifa in the seventh century. The term used was Amir al Muminin, which means commander of the faithful, which doesn't even denote a sense of a successor. So caliph was a shortening of Khalifat Rasul Allah and meant successor of the messenger of God. So 
What we see in the early records is the use of Amir al muminin which has no sense in which it's been used to mean successor. So for all we know, when Amir al mumin is used for Muawai, for example, it could easily mean that that is the very first Amir al muminin It doesn't necessarily mean that he's a successor in any way. And that's going to be key because the argument that's made is that he was a su successor to four other people. But I'm going to argue that the historical record is very doubtful on that score, and it's more likely that uh, really he was the first caliph. I don't know if anyone wants to jump in on that. But... No, that sounds, I mean, I'm going to go with you on this. How about you, Murad? Yes, I agree. But uh, as you see in the Quranic uh, readings, one of the readings, you can uh, change Khalifa just put another dot it will be khaliqa then it will be god saying we have put mankind into the world not a caliph so the word caliph came in later by deleting one dot wow. so that people will will stay in charge forever yes yes that's wow that really kind of destroys it there Okay, so here's the standard chronology according to Islamic tradition. So we have Abu Bakr, 632 to 634. Then we have Umar from 634 to 644. From 644 to 656, we have Uthman. And then from 656 to 661, we have Ali. And it will be interesting by the end of the video how many of these four figures stand in terms of the, their historicity. Were they all caliphs? Were any of them caliphs? And is there any evidence that they actually existed? So that's the, the focus I'm going to have today. Uh, so um, so for, for this, I'm going to be using uh, contemporary sources, which I've got from Robert Hoyland's Seeing Islam as others saw it. If we look at the Doctrina Jacobi, it mentions an unnamed Arabian prophet armed with a sword alive in 634. Now, obviously, I know the problems with that because the, the prophet is unnamed, so it may not necessarily be Muhammad. But if we allow that this is a record for Muhammad, and we also take Thomas the Presbyter's mention of a battle between the Byzantines and the Taiyaye of Muhammad, east of Gaza in 634, this would indicate that. Muhammad is still alive in 634. So if he was still alive in 634, and these are just two examples of sources, there are up to 12 sources I could um, use to make the case for him being alive in that year, then the dates of Abu Bakr's and Umar's caliphates are in doubt, because obviously um, Abu Bakr is meant to have started in 632, ending 634, Umar starts in 634, but if Muhammad is still alive in 634, possibly he could have continued to be alive after 634, which throws Umar's caliphate in doubt as well. Because obviously, if the order is correct, well then, at the very least, Abu Bakr's will need to start in 634. So that means that both of those must be in error. Does anyone want to say anything on that so far? Uh, can I jump in? I just want to say that uh, the last time uh, speaking with uh, Robert Spencer, he said that um, maybe Muhammad was the man of the doctrina Jacobi based on the fact that the Islamic tradition doesn't know exactly when did he die. But I, I personally don't think the doctrina Jacobi is referencing Muhammad uh, whatsoever because even if he, he died at 65 or 66, he was too old to lead that raid. So the doctrine of Jacobi is simply referencing someone else. Well, that's if we assume that the, the Islamic tradition is also correct on the date of birth. But I would argue that there's a good case for Muhammad's birth being wrong as well. But if we leave aside that me, and just... Jump into what he's just said there as well. On top, oh, sorry, yeah. on top of that, if you have a reference for 634 of him up in Jerusalem, not only is he 60 years old, uh, if he was born in uh, 64 years old, because he was born in 570, but on top of that, that would also confront 
the Islamic traditions because there's no reference anywhere in the Islamic tradition that he ever went to Jerusalem. He never mm -hmm. went that far north. And so both, on both cases, the date of his, uh, of his, uh, of his being alive, the fact that as, uh, uh, as Murad is saying, how could he be leading a, uh, a crusade that old? And why is it there's no reference to this in the Islamic traditions suggests that this is not Muhammad. This is probably someone else. Now, what Robert Spencer did say in our, in our session, he thought that this may be one of those, the, whoever is leaving, whoever is leaving, this could be, have been Abu Bakr or a, one of the other caliphs. He was agnostic on that as to who this is. What does Robert Hoyland say this is? Or who does Robert Hoyland say this is? Um, well, in terms of Robert Hoyland, I, I, I'd have to recheck. Um, I don't think he fully accepts the argument that this is Muhammad, but then there is uh, um, Stephen Shoemaker has made a very strong case in a book called Death of a Prophet, where he looks at 12 separate independent sources, which all point to Muhammad being alive after uh, 632. Uh, so this, this case that I'm making doesn't rest just on these two pieces of evidence. I could actually um, marshal all 12 of these, but I don't think it's necessarily essential. But um, if we assume that at least some of these 12 uh, sources that all seem to be pointing to Muhammad entering Palestine and that it happened after 632, it certainly would mess up the chronology. And if um, the later Islamic tradition wants these four caliphs to be alive and have their own period as a caliph, um, they obviously need to have Muhammad dying earlier. So they need him out of the picture in 632 um, in order to create the narrative of these four separate caliphs. But um, I'd like to jump on to an inscription to do with Umar. Okay. So, you know, some people might um, argue with me and say, well, there's um, an inscription to do with Umar which proves that he uh, was a real person and, and he existed. So here's a, a transcription and a translation. It says, in the name of God, I am Zuhair. I wrote this when Umar died in the year seven, or sorry, in the year 24. Now, if you go on to many Islamic sites, they claim that this is Umar, the Caliph. Can anyone see a problem with that? Well, uh, what I personally know is that this is rejected because it's using a, uh, a script that is a little too uh, new. So this is rejected because of that. And plus, it doesn't say any message. I have written this when Omar died. Okay, what is the message? You have another inscription with the same problem. It says Abu Huraira. Just that, Abu Huraira. So what is it? Yeah. Well, one of the things I would point out is um, there's no reference to to him being a caliph. Um, there's no reference to him to being the Emir uh, al muminin you know, the the uh, the leader of the faithful. So this could be any Umar, right? So it isn't particularly strong evidence for him being, well, a that it it is the the Umar that uh, is supposed to be the caliph, but also there's no evidence that this is the caliph per se, because Are they surely... saying that this would be him because the year 24 would make it 644 if you're taking 24 from 622? Is that what they're saying? Well, they, they would say the year is correct, and I have no arg argument with that, but let's say you were to go to a grave, right? And it says, uh, Victoria is buried here, okay? Now, you know the year that Queen Victoria died, and you go, oh, this is Queen Victoria because here's Victoria, and she died in the same year. But this is faulty reasoning because, for all we know, there could be 10,000 Victorias that all have died in that particular year. And same with Umar. This could be a very common name at the time. There may be hundreds of Umars. Um, so it doesn't prove that it is the actual Umar that we want. You need a little bit more information to, to know who it is talking about. Umar supposedly died when? What was the date that he died? Um, I have it here. Um, he, he supposedly died in 644. All right. So this would all, so, this, 
critique then that 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 inscription yeah so the date of his death fits with the islamic tradition it says he died in the year 24 which is 644 or 645 but if the byzantine arab chronicle of 741 is correct that umar reigned for 10 years then there is no time for abu Bakr to have reigned given muhammad is said to be alive in 634 in the in the sources that i've mentioned so there's a problem um muslims can't have it both ways muslims want to use those sources as evidence that muhammad really existed and these are really the only early references to muhammad then they are throwing abu Bakr under the bus if they want to claim that abu Bakr is a real person who was a caliph from 632 634 then they're going to have to throw out those early references and if we don't have those early references then the historicity of Muhammad is put into major doubt. That's 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 where the problem arises. Well, I was thinking even uh, there's a third problem, and that is if you just look at the mathematics, if you go from 620, 622 to 24 years, you're going to you're going to 646. That would also contradict him dying in 644. Yeah, I've double checked with um, with a website where it it has the. Uh, the, uh, let's say the the Anno Hijra versus the the Gregorian calendar, let's say, and uh, so it matches up according to that. Um, I know there's kind of um, maybe Mur Murad might want to explain this, but there the the time of the year when it begins and ends is different in the Islamic tradition to the, the one that we would normally go. Well, it's with. about two weeks every year. We're talking about 24 years. You can't have two years of uh, uh, 14 days taken off each year. You would not get two years taken off that early. A hundred years, yeah. yes, but not within just 20 years. Yeah. So, could you? Well, I would argue. Go back, could you just go back to the inscription? I want to show you something. Yeah. The last word that you see down, it's Wa'ishreen, and it has three dots above it. This is a major flow. There were no dots back then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I didn't even see that. Look at the word above it. Also has a dot above the noon. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah. So this could be a fraud, full stop. It's a much later inscription. And this is what I wanted to say from the very beginning. Take, uh, if you look at any reference, uh, uh, one of the things that we have, how do you date in rock inscriptions? Anybody could know, um, and, and the difficulty is if there. Now, just to be fair, some Muslims will say that there are dots being added at the seventh century. Some have said that. The difficulty with that is they can't prove it because anybody can put dots in at any time, at any date, and certainly what we know with the manuscript evidence, like the Topkapa, and even with the Sana manuscript. This is what Al Fadi is finding in his research that dots are added at a later date so that people later on could read what they what was in front of them. They And you can see that they are been added. In the case of a rock inscription, this could have been added at any time, but the fact that they're there that early, if it's there that early, then you can have, then you have to assume that this is as, this is where a diacritical marks would have been known, at least starting to be added. And the other thing is if, um, if there are dots there, does that affect the, the word Umar there? No, no, no. Omar uh, doesn't have dots. Okay, that's all right. Um, but if those dots were in a different place, would it change the overall meaning at all? It could be if they are placed in a different place, but they are just placed right here. Yeah. Okay. So the chronology has insurmountable problems. Yeah, we could throw out the doctrine of Jacobi and Thomas the Presbyter as evidence to Muhammad being alive in 634. And, but we still have Sabios in the 660s, who clearly says that Muhammad led the invasion into Palestine. The invasion of Palestine is commonly accepted as having happened in 634 to 638. So the problem persists. So I would argue that the chronology has got so many problems with it that it's really on shaky ground. So that's why I'm putting a line between or across each of those, just simply not, not saying Maybe these people really existed, but the historicity is majorly in doubt in terms of the years that they were reigning, if they were reigning. Um, I, would, I would argue that it's, hard, it's not likely that 
at such an early date, we have clear um, rule across this vast land of Syria and um, Arabia and so on. It's too early. So we're moving on to Ali. Um, so Ali was meant to have reigned from 656 and 651. Now, I put my hand up and I would say that um, till very recently, I doubted whether he was a real historical figure. Um, but I've changed my mind on that. I think he, he's a real historical figure, but even then there's major problems but with the, the dates that are given for him and also whether he was a caliph at all. So two of the earliest historical references to Ali contradict the much later Islamic version of events. So we have the Maronite Chronicle, which is from the late seventh century. So it gives the year AG 969, which is the same as 658 AD. And it says the following for the year 658. Muawiyah had his sister's son, Hudhaifa, uh, killed. Hudhaifa killed. Okay. Um, Ali was slain while praying at Hira. Muawiyah went down to Hira and received allegiance from all the Arab forces there. Can you see what the problem is? Now remember, this is a chronicle from this, the late seventh century. So it's in the same century. It says that Ali was killed in 658, not 661. Do you see where the problem is? So, so at the very least, the, if he was a caliph, it was only for two years and not for five years as claimed. Yeah, so it's kind of dying too early and being a, sitting on the throne too too uh, too quickly, or too short. Yep, for too short of a period. But it actually gets worse for the Islamic tradition, as as I'm going to show next. So I found the following. Um, just note that Ali was known as Abu Turab, um, but was he even a caliph? So I'm taking this source here, George of. Reshaina or Reshaina, I think it's Reshaina. Can you check, Murad? Reshaina. I don't know. This is not Arabic. Oh, okay. So this is from the, the year 680. Um, and I just focus on the, the bit that's in bold there. Um, Muawiyah made peace with the emperor, Constance, having started a war with Abu Turab, and that's Ali. And notice what it says the Emir of Hira at Siphon and defeated him. So you can see he was merely an emir of Hira. He wasn't um, a caliph. So in other words, he was essentially a governor of a city in the Lakhmid area. Well, that's fascinating for those of you who are not aware of this. Even the Islamic traditions do state that, that it was at the Battle of Siphon in 661 uh, that Mu'awiyah defeated defeated Ali and that's why uh, Ali had to give up his had to give up his rulership so you have the right names Abu Talib Turab sorry Abu Talib would be the Ali that's just referring to because who else was defeated by Muawiyah at Sifat if it was not Ali and um, Murad you can add to this I believe you have seen a chronicle that says that there was no king of the Arabs from the years uh, 655 to 661 was it you that told me that? I, I think this is uh, the Chronicle of 741. Uh, it, it never mentions Ali. It doesn't know him. Yeah. So it, it would appear that this was an interim period where no one was overall in charge. I think it quite... says that this period was anarchy. Just anarchy. Yeah. Which is a pretty good description for what happened. <laughs> yeah. So given that, I would argue that Ali's caliphate is in doubt. And really, you're only talking about Muawiyah, who's clearly historical as a caliph, and his dates match up, and there's plenty of rock inscriptions to back up his caliphate. But with the other four... Coins to back up him up as well, with his name on it. And that's why it's fascinating that when we discussed this earlier, we really say that the only time that we see a history of the Arab people and anybody who is in power starts in 661 with Muawiyah. Yeah, what I would argue is that um, Muawiyah started off as a ruler in Syria and over time, took him quite a long while, he gradually increased his power 
and eventually was able to take over the entire kingdom. Um, but up to that point, there was no overall ruler. And, and that fits with the coins because you don't have any coins proclaiming the caliphate until Muawiyah's time. So it kind of makes sense. Once you accept that these four first caliphs are in doubt, it all sort of makes sense from that point because it really there was, there was probably a multiplicity of local chieftains at best um, and it, it required civil wars to establish an overall ruler and that took quite a while. Obviously, this is an embarrassing part of Islamic tradition. Um, Muhammad's time didn't bring in a period of peace. It brought in anarchy and war. So later, when they were writing the Hadiths, they obviously wanted to sanitize this period. So they created a kind of a Walt Disney version of events where we have a, a neat, orderly transition from one caliph to another. It is all sunshine and flowers, and uh, it's a golden period. But this is a complete fabrication in my view. Yeah. So my conclusion then is that the historicity of the first four caliphs is seriously in doubt. Attempts at getting their story straight have failed. Abu Bakr couldn't have been a caliph as contradictory evidence rules that out. Umar's historicity rests on one rock inscription that could be about anyone of that name. And as we pointed out, it could be a simple fabrication, forgery. And Ali was never a caliph, and he died three years before his reign was meant to have ended. So that kind of really makes us question the overall story of the first four caliphs. And that's, that's all I have to say, really. Well, thank you. Hey, this has been good. This is a, for those who are out there who are listening to this, it's probably the first time you've heard it. This is the first time I've heard it. I, 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 I'm... I thank Mel for not only doing the research and getting this into uh, into a PowerPoint so we can look at it. I think what we need to do now is let's comment on this. So the, those of you who have watched this video, uh, you, I'm sure, would have your opinions about it. You have the comment box down below. Write your comments. Come back with us with anything that you have add, would like to add to what Mel has said or anything that you would dispute with what Mel has said. Uh, let's go ahead and let's get through try to get it out, try to make sure that we start this debate. Thanks a lot, Mel, for coming on board. Thanks for, uh, for sharing with us. And for the rest of you, God bless you. Keep in touch. This is Jay and Mel and Murad over and out.